it's cool and it's a bit windy but that big patch of blue sky might give me enough to test an MPPT solar charge controller and here's the charge controller I'm going to test today in that sunshine. It's a claimed MPPT solar charge controller. And right off the bat, I am going to say that the company who make this, well, I've had my fingers burnt by them before. I uh, previously uh, reviewed a solar charge controller and thought it was quite good. And then they changed the design. They uh, updated the uh, circuit board inside and it the second version just simply wasn't as good as the first so uh, take this review with a pinch of salt now in the box you do get this manual and a guarantee you also get a temperature battery temperature sensor which is quite good i think and a set of screws and plugs all very useful so i'm quite pleased with the accessories included and what caught my eye about this solar charge controller is, well, its look and its design. This central LCD, just two buttons, a USB, and uh, particularly down here at the bottom where we connect, well, the uh, temperature sensor there, the uh, solar, the battery, the load, and this RJ45 port. It reminded me an awful lot of another solar charge controller. And of course it reminds me of the EP Ever Tracer series. This is the AN model, but uh, it's also similar to the A model. Um, looks very similar, LCD, two buttons. Uh, the Tracer doesn't have the USB, but the uh, connections on the bottom, let me just do that. Yeah, the connections on the bottom are almost identical with the solar, the battery and the load, uh, but crucially, the RJ45 port there for communication. A quick look at the statistics here. As I said, I've got the 20 amp version. Uh, battery input, 10 to 32 volts. Uh, max PV open circuit voltage. Um, normal temperature up to 100 volts. And, uh, well, at its lowest, it can take 92 volts in on the solar input. Uh, 480 watts at 12 volts, 960 watts at 24 volts, and it'll take 6 AWG cable on those inputs. Uh, discharge, self-consumption, less than 20 milliamps. Well, that's okay, I guess, with an LCD and that sort of thing. Uh, and it's got that RS-485 interface on it, but looking in this manual at that it's not wired up in quite the same way as any of the ep ever accessories so uh, perhaps that's something to look at in the future and uh, beyond the scope of this review now i'm going to quickly open up the case because well that's what i do on this channel i like to see if there is an inductor inside mppt solar charge controllers an inductor is required uh, because, well, it needs to do some DC to DC conversion. There needs to be inside here a book converter at the very least to take a high solar voltage and drop it down to the battery voltage. So that is what we will look for inside here first. A big, hopefully reasonable size, being that this is a 20 amp controller think I may have voided my warranty. Right, so with those screws out, I think it lifts up from the top and comes off. The LCD is attached to the front and it's got a ribbon cable there, so I'll just do that. That's the back of the LCD module. And here's the main control uh, PCB. Now, there's a big inductor, isn't it? Right at the top, clamped to that heatsink to keep it cool in a bit of heat shrink and the wires go into it look reasonable enough don't they for 20 amps hopefully uh, they'd be all right with 20 amps if i just turn this round down the end of the heat shrink there you can actually see the coil there and that copper the enamel coppered wire there looks like it'll take 20 amps to me i don't think that's too bad at all let's uh, just pop it down again 
Um, we've got large electrolytic capacitors, presumably on the solar input here. There's the negative side, and they are marked as 100 volt, uh, 470 microfarad. So yes, that is the limitation on the solar input. The uh, capacitors can take no more than 100 volts. I can see some legs down here of components that are clearly underneath the board and attached to the uh, the heatsink here so that'll be your switching MOSFET which may get quite warm um, so they're underneath clamped to that heatsink that's a good sign 30 amp fuse here on the battery terminal I presume 30 amps for a 20 amp solar charge controller that's quite typical really uh, because that really is a fuse of last resort you want uh, an external fuse that's more suited um, to the rating of the unit so you put a 20 amp fuse um, between your battery and the solar charge controller so that should never blow and hopefully it never does because they're usually soldered to the motherboard and that's very difficult to uh, disconnect uh, a couple of low value resistors here and there actually uh, for current sensing probably both of the load output and the power going into the battery by the looks of it so yeah do you know what i'm quite pleased with the the results in here i think that's quite good Looking from a slightly different angle, there's a couple of things I'd like to point out. The main microcontroller seems to be under this electrolytic capacitor. It's marked UE32120B1, I think. That could be a custom module, perhaps. Um, an inductor here in a little 8-pin chip i suspect that could be the 5 volt regulator which of course might be needed for the microcontroller but that's a decent sized inductor but of course we've got those usb ports haven't we so it's probably providing the 5 volts to those usb ports another little interesting thing down here is on the silt screen we can see the symbol of a diode and it's marked d7 uh, but they've actually just tacked a piece of wire across there. So clearly they thought either we don't need a diode there or perhaps they just ran out of diodes and thought, yeah, we'll get away with that one. Who knows? We'll wait and see when we uh, turn this solar charge controller on. Which I think is the next job, isn't it? And today I'm going to use these two 100 watt solar panels in series, I think, for this test. Yeah, the sun's coming down quite nicely now, isn't it? Right, well, I've added some wires here that are going to attach to my 12-volt lead-acid battery bank here in the uh, solar shed. And I've got some wires with some um, banana plugs to connect some solar in a bit. Um, but let's uh, zoom in so that we can see what's going on. So it has to be said, this screen is quite hard to see. The backlight is on. Um, it times out after a little while, but yeah, the backlight is on uh, a colour screen, as you can see, or at least a colour LCD. Um, so you, you're getting the red and the green, there you go, the backlight's gone off, even harder to see now. Let's turn that back on, it's showing the battery voltage, as you can see. Uh, it says it's night time, no solar coming in, that makes sense. Uh, battery indicator there so showing a sort of state of charge and the load is on I'm going to try the select button now and see what happens ah, okay we can see the battery current and uh, the PV voltage the PV accumulated kilowatt hours the load uh, current and the load kilowatt hours and a temperature reading 8.9 degrees that's probably about right like i said it is quite cool load type is presumably if i looked at the manual uh, what happens to the load output is it on or off or is it timed or that sort of thing so we've got a 100 and a 200 setting uh, i suspect you'll be able to have certain amount of hours after dark and certain amount of hours before dawn and that sort of thing i usually leave mine on all the time uh, 20 amps is mentioned i guess it is the 20 amp model um so yeah that seems to be working so let's 
plug in some solar. I'll find my solar wires here, which have knocked the camera slightly. I apologise. Now, these two solar panels you saw outside uh, should have a maximum power point of about 35 volts, an open circuit of about tw uh, 42 volts. And, yeah, there's 200 watts of solar capable at the moment. So let's plug that in and see what happens. The sun has illuminated which is good so the solar coming in and the battery voltage is going up and it's charging at ooh, four five six seven amps excellent eight amps the pv voltage is 33 volts well that is roughly close to the mppt uh, and the well obviously we've not got any accumulated kilowatt hours load nothing on the load at the moment not the easiest menu. Um, right, you have to go through all these again. 14.3 volts. So it's charging my battery up quite high. 14.4 volts. Just about to get to 14.5 volts perhaps. And it's charging that at 8 amps. Okay, due to the fact that this screen is pretty poor to be honest, it's very difficult to see in that menu system you have to go around. I've grabbed some meters, I've got my Vicky meter on the left which is showing my battery voltage. Now that's quite low because both the bench lights that I'm using here are coming from that battery and I have a 100 watt incandescent bulb on my EP Ever Pure Sine Wave inverter as well. So I'm pulling that battery bank down by a good 120 watts, something like that probably. On the right hand side, this ANENG meter is showing the solar panel voltage. They're at open circuit voltage at the moment because they're not connected to this solar charge controller. And at the bottom, we've got the Unity clamp meter, which is hopefully going to show us the current going into my battery. So without further ado, let's plug in the solar and let's see what we can see. Get that at an angle so that we can see it. Uh, we can see the current is increasing. Now it's showing a negative value, but that's just the way I've got the wire clamped around. And we're up to eight amps, nine and a half amps there. The battery's going up to 12.6 volts. Remember, I've still got 120 watts coming off uh, at 12.6 volts. 10 amps would be about 120 watts, wouldn't it? You can see that the bat uh, sorry the solar panel voltage has come down to 33 32.9 volts which is roughly around the maximum power point 9 amps excellent so this is quite happily and definitely doing DC to DC conversion we're seeing 32 uh, volts being turned into 12.6 volts at 9 amps so what's that? Like That's 100 watts coming in, isn't it? That's about 100 watts. Um, yeah, so there's definite difference there between the solar voltage and the battery voltage, and we're seeing a reasonable current. So yeah, it's definitely doing DC to DC conversion, and that voltage is roughly where the maximum power point is. So I'm fairly confident to say that this is doing maximum power point tracking. While I was sitting here watching my batteries charge, I thought, well, I'll test the USB output. So I've got my Rui Deng meter here. So it's producing 5.2 volts. And if I plug a load into it, well, that's sat at 2 amps as well. And if we increase that 5 volts, it's still producing 5 volts at, what, 2.5 amps there and sat there quite nicely. I wonder how high it will go. Uh, 2.7 amps at 5 volts. 2.8. Oh, it's gone off. So about 2.7 amps uh, available there from the USB ports. So I've been watching this for a bit now. Uh, it seems to be sat at about 30 volts at this low 1.8. 2 amps which I'm getting at the moment sun clearly behind a cloud outside of the shed the battery voltage is going down slowly because I'm still pulling about 120 watts from my battery bank and clearly 1 times 30 is only about 30 watts coming in now so yeah um 
Yeah, I think I'll disconnect all of these things and then do a bit of a final analysis. So the sun's pretty much gone now and in fact you may be able to hear some rain on the shed roof. So that concludes my look at the uh, CPK2420 from UEIUA. I really hope that they don't change anything within this solar charge controller because I think actually it's quite good. It was possibly charging my batteries a bit aggressively at 14.5 volts and 8 amps but it equally could have been doing, well, an equalisation charge. Which many solar charge controllers do from time to time. That screen is pretty disappointing. I think there's definitely space for improvement there, but if you connect something to the COM port, you might not even be interested to see the LCD screen. I'm definitely going to have a look at that COM port in the future and see if I can get this uh, solar charge controller talking through or to some of my other devices. And if I do, well, perhaps there'll be another video on this solar charge controller. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.